One of the most ironic things about chemistry is that it's a very visual science when we describe it, with many fanciful creatures with amazing properties. And when you go in the lab, things tend to look like water or powder with different shades of food coloring or no color at all. While we have some methods for looking at the 3D structure of molecules like X-ray diffraction, for most of its existence, chemistry progressed by making educated guesses as to what molecules must look like based on their formula, spectroscopy and reactivity. If we can't get the 3D structure for a molecule for some reason, which happens more often than you may think, we need a guess as to what the molecule will look like. The first tool chemists typically turn to is valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, or VSEPR. The model relies on the fact that electron pairs, whether in bonds or lone pairs, typically will be far apart as possible to get the lowest energy structure. There are some nuances to the method, but in general, placing all the different things around a central atom as far apart as possible will get you in the right ballpark. It's a little like New York Yankees and Mets fans. Electrons live in the same place, but try to avoid each other. VSEPR is really the only method we have to tell us what a 3D structure will be for a molecule, and it is used quite a lot until you have enough experience with particular systems to make a more educated guess. The model works well for main group compounds, with some exceptions. VSEPR doesn't work particularly well for transition metal complexes, but even here people discuss distortion of a complex, which usually means deviation from an expected VSEPR structure. For example, hexamethyl tungsten is a six-coordinate metal compound that many would assume from VSEPR to be octahedral. However, the molecule is distorted to a less symmetric structure. If you know group theory, it's C3V. However, it isn't like it caught dubstep in 2010 and leveled up its drip with some next-gen swag while changing its symmetry. It was never octahedral. A compound always had been in lower symmetry, but sometimes we need a place to start for discussion of the structure. Here, we will discuss the basics of VSEPR with some examples. VSEPR uses domains, regions of electron density around the central atom. The domains can be bonding pairs of electrons or lone pairs. The first step is always to draw the Lewis structure for the compound in two dimensions. Let's take methane, CH4. Carbon has four valence electrons, and each hydrogen has one. The unpaired hydrogens can pair up to form four bonds between the carbon and the hydrogens in the Lewis structure. Then Vesper gives the 3D structure as tetrahedral. As stated above, the central atom gets the four things as far apart as possible, which in this case is a tetrahedral structure. The notation for Vesper looks like this. A is a central atom, E is a lone pair, and X is a substituent, X or X prime, etc. for different groups. Here are a couple of examples with ammonia and BrF5. Start with the formula for a molecule. Draw the Lewis structure, then determine the Vesper notation. For ammonia, we have a lone pair and three X groups, hydrogens. So the notation is AX3E. For BrF5, we have one lone pair and five X groups, fluorines. So the notation is AX5E. Next, we determine the number of electron domains. You simply add the number of lone pairs and bonds. If there is a single electron domain, a radical, we give it the symbol lowercase e, and we count it as well. For our examples, NH3 has a Vesper notation of AX3E, which has 3 plus 1 things around the central atom, so 4 domains. For BRF5, the notation is AX5E, which has 5 plus 1 equals 6 domains. Next, we need to find the base geometry for that number of domains. These base geometries are the starting point for our 3D structure. Here, the base geometries are tabulated for different numbers of domains. If all the substituents are the same, like in CH4, we would have a Vesper notation of AX4. Then the compound will usually have the, exactly the base geometry. For AX4, there are four domains. The table says the base geometry is tetrahedral, as is the geometry of methane. It is exactly tetrahedral. If the compound has four different types of domains, they can be different sizes, leading to some deviation from the pure base geometry. This is the case for both NH3 and BRF5, both of which have one lone pair along with other groups. Let's look at NH3 first. Since there are four total domains in AX3E, 
the base geometry is tetrahedral and we place the four groups on a tetrahedron. When we have different groups, some may have a larger domain and take up more space. A lone pair is larger than any other two electron domain. In other words, it is larger than anything with a single bond. We can think of a lone pair as being a bond to a group with an electronegativity of zero. If the group on the other end of the bond has low electronegativity or zero electronegativity, then the pair of electrons has to be supported more by the central atom, in this case nitrogen. In other words, the electron domain is very close to the central atom, which causes it to take up a great deal of space. Compare low electronegativity iodine on a central atom versus high electronegativity fluorine. And let's assume the central atom is of modest electronegativity. The domain of the bond to iodine will be larger towards the high electronegativity central atom because it can better support the electron density. As a result, the domain near the central atom takes up a larger angle of space. In contrast, the electron domain moves towards the more electronegative fluorine and is smaller near the central atom, so it takes up a smaller angle near A. As a result, we say less electronegative groups and lone pairs have larger domains. The angles to them will be slightly larger. For ammonia, this means the lone pair AH angles are larger, which shrinks the H and H angles. For BrF5 with the AX5E Vesper formula, the base structure is octahedral. The lone pair takes up more space, shrinking the FBrF angles. Similar to ammonia, you can see this behavior in the angles of phosphenes as well. Take the series PX3, where X equals fluorine, CF3, Cl, Br, and I. The order goes like this, which is related to the electronegativity of the group, not its size. If it was size, the CF3 group would be one of the largest angles. And if you calculate the radius of CF3, it is between bromine and iodine. However, the tris CF3 compound has one of the smallest angles near fluorine, consistent with the electronegativity determining the size. If the central atom is less electronegative, we think of the lone pairs as being even less well supported by the central atom, and the angles change even more. For example, if we compare water and SH2, the less electronegative sulfur has larger lone pairs, leading to a smaller angle between the hydrogens as they get pushed together by the large, fluffy lone pairs. There are some base structures that, unlike tetrahedral and octahedral, have different types of positions within the geometry like trigonal bipyramidal, or TBP for short. In TBP, we have axial positions and equatorial positions. The larger substituents on A will typically be placed in the more open equatorial positions. These positions are 90 degrees to only two groups, giving them more open angle for the larger groups. Smaller groups typically prefer the axial positions, which are 90 degrees for three groups with less space. To a point, this is controlled by the electronegativity of the group, just like in the PX3 example before. For example, all of these five domain phosphorus compounds have been prepared and structurally characterized using some method. The most electronegative group is fluorine, followed by CF3, then chlorine. PF5, as you would expect, is trigonal bipyramidal. If you replace one of the fluorines with a less electronegative CF3, you expect it to go into the one or more open equatorial sites, which is exactly what is observed. If you take TBP PCL5 and replace one chlorine with more electronegative CF3, you expect replacement at the axial site, which is what you get. If you replace another chlorine with CF3, it goes in the other axial site. If you just make the group physically very large, you can get deviations where electronegativity stops determining the bonding pattern. But otherwise, electronegativity tells you how to build the 3D structure. If a molecule has a single electron in an orbital, it's called a radical. These have single electron domains, which unsurprisingly are smaller than two electron domains. One nice example is SF4 anion, which has both a lone pair and a radical. We might write its Vesper formula like AX4 big E little e, where the little e is for the radical domain. There are six domains total, so the base structure is octahedral. We place the lone pair in one of these positions, but but then we still have to decide what's next to it, F or E. In this case, the fluorines are in the plane next to the lone pair and get pushed downward towards the small one electron domain. If we compare singlet methylene, CH2 with our lone pair, and CH2 radical cation, the lone pair pushes the hydrogens to a very small angle of 81 degrees, while the small radical one electron domain gives a much wider HCH angle of 140 degrees. 
As you might expect, multiple bond domains are larger than single bond domains. If you have a single bond or a lone pair, then there are two electrons in the domain. If you have a double bond, then there are four electrons in the domain, and it takes up much more space. For example, OSF4 has a TBP structure, AX4X prime. The larger double bonded oxygen goes in the equatorial plane as expected, but it also takes up more space in the plane, shrinking the FSF angle to 114 degrees from 120 in the base structure. If you make the group with a double bond less electronegative by switching from oxygen to CH2, it takes up even more space. In summary, here are a few bullets for finding Vesper structures. Find the Vesper formula where the central atom A is surrounded by lone pairs E and bonds of other groups X. For example, H2O has Vesper formula of AE2X2. The base structure is assigned. Two domains equals linear, three domains equals trigonal planar, four domains equals tetrahedral, five domains equals trigonal bipyramidal, six domains equals octahedral, and seven domains equals pentagonal bipyramidal. Lone pair domains are larger than any X group. X group size is affected by electronegativity. Double bond domains are larger than single bond domains. These points will help you assign the vast majority of structures. Let's walk through BF3 as an example. Both bromine and fluorine are halogens in what was the old group 7, meaning it had 7 valence electrons. We'll start with the central bromine and its 7 electrons. Typically, halogens make a single bond with their one unpaired electron, so fluorine we can think of as bonding with just one of its electrons. There are three fluorines, so they make two electron bonds by attaching to one electron each on the bromine. From this, it's pretty easy to see we have a central atom A, two lone pairs, two E, and three fluorines, three X. So the formula is AE2X3. The E2X3 formula has five things on a central atom, which means it has a trigonal bipyramidal structure. The lone pairs take up more space and go into the more open equatorial positions. The structure is generally referred to as T-shaped. Let's do a few more for practice. Here are three more examples. Pause the video if you want to give these a try, and I'll give you the answers in three, two, one. For A, we have a sulfur compound with a two minus charge. We can think of putting the charge on the sulfur at the start or do it later. Let's just do it now. Then we can make double bonds to three oxygens. This leaves a single lone pair on the central atom. So the formula is AX3E with a tetrahedral base structure. The lone pair has a slightly larger domain here, even than the double bonds. And the OSO angles are 108 degrees, slightly less than the tetrahedral angle. For B, you have a carbon with only three electrons after considering the charge. These make bonds to hydrogen and give an AX3 formula. The base structure is trigonal planar because the groups are all the same. The exact structure is trigonal planar. Finally, for C, we have xenon difluoride, ZeF2. Xenon is a noble gas with eight electrons in its valence shell. It makes bonds to two fluorines, leaving three lone pairs. This gives a formula of AE3X2. So the base structure is trigonal bipyramidal. The larger lone pairs go into the equatorial sites, leaving the axial sites for the fluorines. As a result, the compound is linear. That's valence shell electron pale repulsion theory, the most important tool we have for guessing the 3D structure of molecules, or at least making an initial guess. With a little practice, finding these structures becomes second nature. Thanks for watching. We make these videos for fun and as a way of giving back to the community. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Really, the best way to support our channel is to watch more videos, and we have quite a few at a variety of levels. We generate videos as best we can since we have other jobs, so please turn on notifications so you don't miss anything. Thanks again.